I love podcasts, but I have an annoying habit of always recommending them to my friends. So with that in mind, I suggest you listen to Gavin Crawford's Let's Not Be Kidding. I'm going to chat with him in just a moment, but first, here's Gavin's life in 30 seconds. <laughs> because here at CBC, we like comedies, even if they're funny. Gavin Crawford came to national attention during his eight-year run on This Hour Has 22 Minutes. The comedian from Tabor, Alberta, has a knack for creating memorable characters. Hey, I'm Mark Jackson at the Waterkeeper Celebrity Ski Event, because nothing raises the awareness of the environment more than watching celebrities ski all over it. Currently, as the host of Because News on CBC Radio, Crawford moderates a quiz show where laughs are more important than facts. It just depends on if you go with science or philosophy. <laughs> it's Alberta, so neither. <laughs> There's some humor in his new podcast, too, but it's certainly not front and center. Let's Not Be Kidding has all of the emotions, as Crawford and some of his talented friends detail the pain and absurdity of dealing with a loved one's dementia. I spoke to Gavin Crawford at the Because News studio in Toronto. Gavin, thank you very much for sitting down with me. Your podcast is fantastic. Oh, I, I, I love it so much. And, and let's be clear, this is not a comedy. I mean, no, it's not, uh, you know, it's called Let's Not Be Kidding for a reason because, you know, it's uh, it's a sad thing and I don't want anyone to think like, hey, I made this funny thing where I'm making fun of my mom's Alzheimer's. Ha ha, look at all this stupid thing she does. It's not that, um, you know, but there is elements that you can find just in the pure absurdity of that kind of um, disease, coupled with, you know, sort of very long grief. Anyone that's gone through a process of like, you know, I call it long grief. My mom used to sort of go in and out of knowing who I was. Occasionally she would mistake me for my dad, which was fine, just for a minute though. But it started to happen more and more for longer periods of time. My whole MO as a person in the world and as a professional, the only thing I ever really knew how to do was to see kind of horrible things and hold up a funhouse mirror to them and, you know, distort them in just enough of a way that it makes it silly or ridiculous or absurd and, you know, helps either other people get through that horrible situation or to look at a situation in a different way or just, you know, in the terms of like, you know, personal survival helps me just not get beat up in the schoolyard. Uh, you know, so uh, it's a very strong defense mechanism that I can now use as an offense mechanism. But she would always play innocent. It was her favorite thing to do. I remember my sister walked in kind of bedraggled after a party one time. And my mom, there was a lot of people sitting in the living room. And my mother just said, wow, you look like you've been rode hard and put away wet. And everyone was kind of like, mom. And she's like, you know, what? Like a horse, you know. But you could tell from the twinkle in her eye, she knew what she was saying. It's a podcast about a lot of things, primarily Alzheimer's and dementia, but it's also obviously a podcast about your mom. Let's Not Be Kidding is the perfect title for it, not just because it kind of captures the, the sensibility of the podcast, but it also tells us a little bit about her wry view of the world. Yeah, I mean, my mom was complicated in a way because she, she had um, you know, many different sides. She was very shy, but she was also incredibly um, independent and like super brave and could do anything she wanted. She liked things that were a little bit odd and weird, which was lucky for me because I was both. <laughs> and um, yeah, and she just, I mean, let's not be kidding was one of, you know, she had many little catchphrases, but that was one she would say when, that was how she would let you know that she sort of saw the full picture. If you, I like if I had a friend in, in junior high who was a bit of a badass, <laughs> and you know, I would be like, oh, can I hang out with so-and-so? And she'd be like, yeah, yeah, but don't go to the mall with them because, you know, let's not be kidding. <laughs> and then you're like, oh yeah, right, she knows he steals. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, she would just let you know uh, that she knew the lay of the land. But she wasn't really like a smack talker, so she would just kind of leave it there. What topic apparently does not warrant a public inquiry? Galen Weston's bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> So let's talk about this show a little bit. And, and I wonder, it's a challenging time for me in the news business, uh, you know, a time of 
a lot of ugliness in the news, a lot of, uh, you know, people like, like sort of a, a deep divide, especially in the United States. How hard is it these days to parody the news? Uh, I mean, sometimes it's hard because sometimes it's just an actual parody of itself. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, other times it's a gift because things are patently absurd and you can really lean into that. Um, you know, it's a it's an impossible task to do a news comedy right now, uh, but it also always has been uh, an impossible task to do any comedy because everyone thinks they know what's funny and anything that they don't think is funny, they're a hundred percent sure is not funny and should never have been said. And um, how dare anyone say that? I mean, the difference now is they can let the world know in a tweet within seconds. Yeah, I mean, but you know, Twitter, Social media, all I just take with a grain of salt. Yeah. Like it's just a different medium. I mean, people have said I've, I've I've been in this business for a long time. I've had terrible letters saying like you know it's so unfortunate that you didn't die of AIDS yet from like back in the 1990s. Wow. Now I just get them in a tweet. So you know, and I'm like block, block, block. I always say with because he was like. You know, we just try to be silly about everything, but it, it's a no-win situation. In the same episode, I'll make a terrible, I'll, well, not a terrible joke, <laughs> uh, or maybe a maybe terrible joke, I don't know. But like in the very same episode, we'll like do a fairly hard joke about something Trudeau did, you know, uh, that will get a oof from the studio audience. And you know, and then uh, later on in the episode, there will be like a polyab joke and the same thing. And you know, people will listen to the whole episode and, yeah, both people will write in and be like, you would never say anything bad about Justin Trudeau. But I just did. <laughs> and then, you know, the same people will be like, yeah. why, are you, why are you hitting yeah. Justin Trudeau so hard when you don't say anything about Paul Yev? And you're like, literally in the same episode, there is a hard joke about each, mm -hmm. but they don't, for whatever reason, they, don't, they only hear, you know, the thing that they want to get mad about. And all I can do is serve up both and I guess take which dish that they, you know, Take. With the podcast, you, you let us into your life, and, uh, and and so we know what a grueling journey this was for, for everyone in your family as your mother dealt with dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, has it changed you? And, and I, I mean, I think particularly, you know, you have a lot of creative years ahead of you um, as an artist. D do you think differently about that now after all that you've been through? Well, I mean, I know I'm probably not going to remember any of it, so it doesn't. It makes things matter less. So that uh, you're making a joke, but would would are you joking about? What? Well, I mean, let's not be kidding. It's runs in the family. I'm a lot like my mother. It's either me or my other sister. We both know. So we're just hoping for some scientific advancements at this point. I mean, that's the thing. Everyone you talk to, everyone I spoke with on the podcast, it's all in our mind because you watch the person going through it. And my mother's mother went through it, mm. so. You know, she knew what was happening as it was happening because she had been through it with her own mother and, you know, had 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 conversations with me like, if that is to me, like, you know, get the pillow. And you're like, rum, write that down because I can't, you know. And then later on, you know, 20 years later, you're sitting there and thinking about like rolling back to that conversation being like, oh, does she, is she, is she I know she said what she said. And then you're like, Okay, well, I can't, <laughs> I'm not getting the pillow. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, so, I mean, it's changed me in a way of I'm going to write a few things down uh, about the future. Uh, so I don't know. I, has it changed me? Uh, I guess it's made me a little less afraid about talking about things that are sad. And it's also changed how I deal with people who are going through loss or experiencing loss because I know now that if someone's like, oh yeah, I'm having a really hard time with this or my, you know, my father's in the hospital or whatever, that I can say like, oh, that's, that's too bad. But then also, you know, make a joke or tell a funny story because I know from being on the other side of it, what they don't want is like an outpouring of like, oh, I don't know how to deal with you. Uh, you know, uh, better to just, you know, meet them where they are and, you know, they're already going through it, so you can be sarcastic and you can be supportive and you can basically be normal. I learned a lot listening to your podcast and, and it's allowed me to have conversations that I otherwise wouldn't have. And uh, 
I think you've done a great service, and occasionally it was funny too. So. Yeah, well, hopefully there is there is a bit of that. I mean, people don't talk about it even within their own families. I think when you're going through. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a really nice piece of work. So thank you very much. Thank you.